Minka Fitzpatrick just got paid $18.4 million a year on his upcoming extension, despite the fact that some people might not necessarily think he had the greatest season, and I am one of those people. He is currently now the 13th highest paid player in football that's not a quarterback, but he was also Pro Football Focus's fifth worst safety in football last year that had enough eligible snaps. It was out of just under 90 total safeties. So, What's the disparity and why did this happen? Well, let's get into the film and I do have to say like there's some issues on film and some of the issues are not necessarily Fitzpatrick issues. They are scheme issues. That was a very real thing that was at times very frustrating to watch. And I think part of why the Steelers are saying maybe we used him incorrectly, which is why we're still going to pay him uh, the money, which I actually understand. Where What's going to happen on a play like this is I'm not going to break down the entirety of the play. Just you see how far off he is playing. That's where he is on the field. I mean, he's over 20 yards off already, and he's going to get further. Look at how right when this play begins, you see how he steps back to the point where he's at the 35-yard line on this play, at his own 35-yard line on a play that, you know, started on, uh, you know, the Kansas City 35-yard line. So that's a pretty uh, dramatic jump to be you know going that far back when you're not getting pushed that far back by any wide receiver really you see how there's a receiver cutting towards the sideline and Fitzpatrick notices this but at this point there's not really too much he can do Mahomes is going to make this throw and that's just completely wide open as Fitzpatrick was never going to be able to get there in time and that was probably a strategic decision to make sure you don't get beat deep by Patrick Mahomes because he can certainly do that to you but you basically put yourself in a can't win scenario by doing this so this is one of those I don't know if I can really blame Fitzpatrick for but it was a real issue just with how he was used in general we also have something like this which is another kind of example of this but this is where maybe we can start to put a little bit of blame on him and maybe say hey hey these are things that we're going to want to see him do better uh, this year is, you know, this upcoming year, now that he's getting paid a lot more. What's going to happen is it's going to be a cover two zone, and you see where he's supposed to cover. He is a deep safety to the offense's left. This is the concept the Chiefs are running, and while Fitzpatrick obviously does not know that this is going to be the concept that they're running at the time, what he does know is that there's three eligible receivers lined up on his side of the field, which means that there's a very good chance he's going to have to make sure that he covers one of these guys right when this play begins you see how you know two of the Pittsburgh players kind of underneath both are again it's it's kind of weird where the, the Steelers are very much kind of playing where they're going to try to get to their spot as opposed to cover a different player but still the two guys who are running the most underneath routes are the ones the most covered and the furthest guy down the field is the one who I have circled in yellow this is realistically where Fitzpatrick should be looking at. Due to the fact that Pittsburgh had their safeties playing so far deep, and it's, you know, similar things are happening on the other side of the field. It's nowhere near as dramatic. I shouldn't say it's nowhere near as dramatic. It's not as dramatic, although you can get away with that a little bit more since, you know, on that side of the field, there's only two eligible receivers. But over here, you're now in a situation where Fitzpatrick is out of position. And this, again, I'm willing to, uh, I'm sure Steelers fans are going to say, yeah, this was a coaching thing. If it was, then it was. I can't say that for certain. I don't know that, but I'm willing to say that there's at least a chance that this was more of a, a scheme issue, and they said that this is what we're going to do against the Chiefs, and it just it was kind of a bad strategy in hindsight. But look at how Fitzpatrick still kind of stays deep. Look at how he doesn't really run in and waits way too long and then misses the tackle, which allows for a big completion right there. That's not what he should have done there. He probably should have read that play a little earlier and gotten in position earlier. For a safety, positioning is, is your job. Like, that's what you do. If you're out of position as a safety, like, you're not doing your job as a safety. That's literally what you're supposed to do is be in position. This plays another example from that, you know, Chiefs game. This is the playoff game because a lot of people said, ah, well, he was he really improved his game later on this season. Maybe had a couple weak spots early on, but then did better later on. And I would agree with that, actually. But I would also still say, like, there were some issues later, you know, on in the season as well. It might be how he's used. It might be... Uh, you know him himself not being in position but this is a great example of like I just don't know what they're doing here really and also this was a tough situation where it's going to be so he's the deep safety on this play it's a cover one play and you see he's already at the 10 yard line so that's where he's at Fitzpatrick's job here is pretty clearly do not give up a touchdown and what's one way you can really give up a touchdown against a cover one play against you know when you're playing the Chiefs 
uh, it's a Tyreek Hill one-on-one -on -one matchup towards the sideline. That's the main thing you should be focused on. And I don't know why Fitzpatrick, if you're going to play one safety deep, which they shouldn't be doing anyways, but if they are, why is he so far over? Why isn't he playing closer towards Tyreek Hill's side of the field? Why are you just straight up on the middle of the field, especially one on the other side of the field? The only receiver who's currently you know, the only eligible receiver who's currently on the line right now for Kansas City is Travis Kelsey. So if you're playing that far off, why aren't you cheating over to the, you know, to the top half of the screen? Maybe this is a, again, maybe it's a strategy thing. Maybe it's a coaching thing, but also like as a safety, you do kind of have to read the play and make adjustments yourself. And I think Fitzpatrick should have done that on this play. I do. Again, I know Steelers fans won't like me criticizing this. Steelers fans are going to say he's done nothing wrong, which again, part of it, I, I get it. Like he, you like this player and I'm not saying Fitzpatrick is a bad player. I'm just saying he made mistakes last year that he needs to clean up. Because look, as you see, I mean, part of this is for sure that Hill gets open really quickly. Mahomes makes this throw really quickly. Like it's hard to beat those two guys, but that's kind of my point is it's hard to beat those two guys. And whether it's a coaching issue or a Fitzpatrick issue, I don't know, but you have to fix it regardless. That's just something that's absolutely true. And I think Steelers fans will agree with that of like, yeah, that was a dumb play that happened there. You shouldn't have let that happen. You should have been prepared for a potential, uh, you know, Travis Kelsey, uh, excuse me, uh, Tyreek Hill deep shot. That's obviously something that could happen. And going over to some of those early games that, you know, we talked about where he did not play too well, like he did not play too well. This Buffalo game was a tough game for him. It's going to be a zone coverage play. And you see, he's the, you know, the deep safety on this play. That's kind of typically what his role is. He's a prototypical free safety. He plays some strong, of course, because, you know, if you're safety in today's NFL, you're going to have to play some strong and some free, but he's m primarily a free safety. And so if you see this concept on the screen, clearly, knowing what you know now, there's an obvious way that you should cover this, right? Where you have the deep corner, that's the guy who's covering the top left-hand corner of the screen. Uh, he kind of cuts, goes a little bit in, covers the guy who's running about just going to be just underneath him. And then for Fitzpatrick, who's covering the white zone, uh, basically he just covers the guy who runs right into his zone. This is, you know, certainly something that on paper is pretty obvious what you should do. Again, I have the, you know, obvious ability of being able to watch it, you know, 10 times over and then, you know, saying this is what he should have done. So obviously I get that luxury, but still watch what happens. And so as you see, once this play begins, really when it breaks out, like to me, this is an obvious read. This is very simple. This is the equivalent of a quarterback seeing a wide open wide receiver. It's like you hit the wide open wide receiver. That's what you should do. You see the two players that I'm highlighting, though, that's where they should be covering. And if they do that, then everyone's going to be accounted for right here. That's what should be happening. Instead, Fitzpatrick does not do that, and he runs to a different guy, which left someone wide open. Allen didn't see it, and, you know, he hit Diggs, who picked up a first down, so he's not complaining about it. But had, I, you know, I think had Allen seen that, that's a touchdown right there. Again, we're talking a little bit later on into the play, but it was just one of those, like, yeah, why did you make that decision? And this is one thing where, okay, the results were fine. The results don't matter. No one's blaming him for this. But if you watch the tape, which... Most people don't for safeties. Safeties are the one position that I think the fewest amount of people actually know. And that's just simply for the obvious, right? I mean, I don't know how many of you uh, watching this video actually grind through safety tape too frequently. Like, again, I do it because it's my job. I have the time to do it. A lot of you guys don't have the time to do it. So all you can really do is watch, you know, the games that you watch, which they don't show the safeties on most plays. Or you can look up like a PFF grade, which I think is pretty usually pretty accurate, but not everyone likes PFF, which then means that you're essentially just kind of going off of what other people say, which of course isn't a horrible thing either, right? Right? Like I think that, you know, you can go off of what other people say. I'm just saying that as a whole, I'm not saying that everyone who thinks Fitzpatrick has had a good year last year doesn't know what they're talking about. No, plenty of people who do know what they're talking about still like this season last year. All right, agree to disagree. I'm just saying that safety in general, it's just always a difficult uh, thing to talk about. And like, how about something like this? You know, we're, listen, a lot of those plays I showed you earlier, uh, I'm sure a diehard Steelers fan will have justified all of them. Maybe we'll put a comment in the comments below explaining why all those plays were secretly good, actually. This one, you can't really do that. So it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup to Stephon Diggs and watch what happens. Look, as you see, Diggs gets past the cornerback, so it's just Fitzpatrick. Diggs makes a good move and burns Fitzpatrick. The other uh, safety did a good job of reading that play well and, you know, uh, helping get into the play. But honestly, that could have even been a penalty on Fitzpatrick. And with a perfect throw, that's probably a touchdown. So, listen... It's not to say that Fitzpatrick was getting burned like this every game or anything like that or every play. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying 
he made more mistakes than he's made in past years. I think that's fair to say. This was, we hold him to a high standard. He's the highest paid safety in the league. He did not play like the highest paid safety in the league last year. A play like this is the definition of a what are you doing here, Fitzpatrick type of play. This is just a dumb play by Minka Fitzpatrick. It's going to be a cover three zone. You see where he's covering. And with this concept, the way it is, the only guy you should even have to worry about is going to be Brian Edwards, who's running a deep route. That's the only guy that has a deep safety you really have to worry about until the ball gets thrown and then maybe you can run up and make a tackle. And look, as you see, so what's going to happen here is Fitzpatrick, I get why he's doing this, right? He sees the tight end is running in a way that could allow him to get open. So he's kind of trying to get in position to make this play, which I do actually understand. The issue is if you're going to do that, you can't do it in the way that you're doing it. Where watch what he's about to do. Joey, focus on him. He essentially creates a pick, which would have allowed Edwards to get wide open. Again, had Carr thrown it in that direction. Granted, you know, the play lasted a little bit longer, uh, or play would have had to last a little bit longer for that to happen. So, you know, uh, it did not matter too much. But even if Fitzpatrick had gotten there cleanly, he wasn't going to be able to disrupt that pass at all. He would have just been able to potentially make a tackle like inside the five instead of a touchdown. Like that's not a good decision and that's not what you're supposed to do as a safety you're supposed to cover it a deep route uh which he didn't even cover he in fact created a pick play essentially on his own guy which would have allowed him to get open just not a smart play something like this again another one where what's going to happen on this play it's man coverage he's running he's playing uh deep safety on this play so he's the free safety uh watch what happens and look right when this play begins so he's looking at darren waller who again I get the logic behind it. Darren Waller is very good. You don't want to leave him one-on-one. -on -one. And this is also one of those, like, I'm not in the huddle. So I know everyone's going to say, oh, this is why you can't you know, really evaluate this stuff because you're not, you know, in the huddle. You don't know what the Steelers coaches know. And that's absolutely true. But I can still give my opinion on what I do know, which is this stuff happened way too frequently, in my opinion, where you see him moving in to try to double one guy, which is now leaving the other guy open. And Carr is going to make this throw deep down the field. And Fitzpatrick is not able to come back and get there. And it ends up being a touchdown. So to me, part of this might just simply be, well, yeah, like the corners weren't very good. So basically all quarterbacks had to do was say, okay, where should I, you know, who do I throw it to that's not double team because you're probably going to be open? Like, that's probably part of it. But also, like, again, as a safety, typically the way teams want you to do it is you cover deep over the middle, which he wasn't doing on that play, and that led to a big 61-yard touchdown, which you don't like to see. So, again, are these horrible plays? No. Like, I mean, if it's Patrick, I'm still going to bet on being a good player. Like, if I if gun to my head, if you told me uh, I had to bet my life on him playing well next year or uh, playing poorly next year. I'm going to bet that he's going to play well, but I just don't understand why you go out and pay him right now when you still have him under contract for another year and the franchise tag for safeties is so cheap. So like you have plenty of control with him. Why not just give him another year, get one more year of sample size in? Cause like, listen, yeah, he, this is probably just a mix, um, you know, one small step backwards, but like, that's what we thought about Eddie Jackson, and then he fell off a cliff, and, you know, everyone made fun of PFF for saying he had a bad year, and now it's kind of like, yeah, no, that was, you know, he's not as good as we thought he was. Minka Fitzpatrick is primarily known for his splash plays, but when those splash plays dry up, he's just not as dominant as he is when those splash plays are there. I think that that's possibly a thing that could be true but that being said you put him in a situation where the splash plays you know where he can make splash plays again you put him in a better situation where we have seen him thrive in the, his first two years of Pittsburgh and then he could start to look like that dominant safety we've seen in the past so that's probably what the scenario is but I would have just given it an extra year there's really no harm in that he would have still you know you, you made him the highest paid safety anyway so uh if you have to end up giving him an extra million next year which probably would be you know more than what I would actually assume it would be because you still have control with the franchise tag threat that's just what I would have done and I do think he had a down year last year that's kind of my main points I think that again that's all I'm really trying to say in this video what do you guys think let me know in the comments below always love hearing from you and of course as always thanks for watching